a Wednesday night edition of the Air Torres Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Torres. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody is having a great day. As you can see, I am back in LA. But when I tell you the storylines, oh, they are a flowing. Well, guess what? The storylines, people are a flowing. Listen, you don't need me to tell you what tonight's show is about. Tonight's show is very straightforward. John Calipari, as I'm recording here, it is 8.05 Eastern, 7.05 Central. An hour ago, John Calipari was introduced as the head coach of the University of Arkansas. The pictures, the video, the hog call, it's all going to take some getting used to for me, for you, for Kentucky fans, for Arkansas fans, whatever. But it is official. There is no turning back. So what I want to do is react first to the press conference itself. And then from there, uh, boy, oh boy, we got to talk about uh, what Calipari's first moves are, uh, what his staff is going to look like. There are reports already that he is meeting with high-level NIL boosters. So John Calipari, the Arkansas head coach, by the way, recruiting stuff, like I said, it's going to take some getting used to because I will call him the Kentucky coach at least 37 times throughout this show. But he was introduced on Wednesday night. Talk a lot of Calipari, but listen, there, there's two sides to every story. And the other side is that at least right now, at least as of 8 p.m. Eastern, Kentucky still does not have a head coach here on Wednesday night. So it appears as though, it feels as though the focus is on Scott Drew. There were certainly some interesting developments on the Dan Hurley front. So we'll talk about all of that because I'll tell you what, you know, Kentucky has to move fast. Kentucky has to get a new head coach, and I think they will here in just a second. So with that said, we have ourselves just so much to discuss tonight. There is no more time to waste, and let's get to the topic of the day. And the topic of the day, let me just say this. I just got one question for you, baby. I just got one question for you. Can anything stop the big pig invasion? That is right. Can anything stop the Big Pig Invasion? Shirts are available. Not going to lie. It's been a tough couple months for Arkansas fans. Obviously, football struggled. Basketball did not live up to expectations. But boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a twist of events over the last four to five days. Obviously, culminating with John Calipari's press conference. And so, you know, what's funny is I look back on the Sunday night show into Monday morning. And honestly, what's kind of crazy, I really just, as strange as it sounds, I did not really react that much to John Calipari, like, like the report from Wes. Like we had Wes Moore on the show. And if you remember, we talked a lot of, to, to Wes about it, but it hit me that we really didn't say much in general, just about my thoughts. And so I've had a lot of thoughts on the John Calipari news and I really just, I, I want to get them all out here. I will try to be concise. I will try to be organized. But let me go ahead and give you a few quick thoughts on the new head coach, John Calipari, his introductory press conference, and what this all means for Arkansas going forward. The first thing, let me start by saying this. Listen, obviously, you know, Sunday into Monday into Tuesday, it was a crazy time. And, and you know, if you listen to Wes Moore on this show, he said, look, nothing is going to happen Monday. National championship game is going on. Obviously, as we talked about on Monday night, there were a lot of reports out of Kentucky that maybe he couldn't get out of his contract. I love and respect everybody who covers Kentucky basketball. I take their word for it. But from the Arkansas perspective, the plan was always to make an announcement on late Tuesday into Wednesday and hold a press conference after the national championship game, which is exactly what happened. But what I will tell you in general is that in my opinion, my whole stance on this John Calipari thing and really the stance of leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas, it really did, in my opinion, change uh, really on Tuesday afternoon when he released that, that pre-recorded video. Last time we'll probably ever see him wearing that Royal Kentucky blue, but I thought the video to me, it, it really did change my perspective and let me go ahead and explain why, Okay. Because at the end of the day, when I think back to how I thought on Sunday night about John Calipari going to Arkansas, I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was great for content, great for my business, whatever. But at the same time, I kind of sat there and said, Coach Cal, you have this incredible legacy at the University of Kentucky. It has not ended well. But 
Do you really want to go to an SEC rival? You're going to be coming a rup every year. Is that really how you want this thing to end? Do you really want to make this move at this time? But that statement on Tuesday, to me, changed everything. If you listen to the statement, I thought he said it with class. One, he said point blank. He said, look, I think it is time for this school, this fan base, this administration. I think it's time that everybody has a new voice leading the University of Kentucky. And I agree with that is it just felt like, and we talked about it the night they lost to Oakland, it just felt like, you know what, maybe it is really time for him to move on. But the second part of the statement that really struck me was this. He said, I like coaching. I like developing. I like working with kids on a day-in, day-out basis. And that's when it hit me. Why should this man retire? If he has coached basketball his whole life, if that's all he knows, If he knows that he's really not wanted at Kentucky and it's probably best for him to move on, but somebody is still willing to pay him to coach, then who am I to say that he shouldn't coach? And so to bring that full circle, we are coming off of the press conference at Bud Walton Arena where there had to be thousands of people in attendance, including John Tyson, the big donor, uh, including all the, the coaches. I think Dave Van Horn, the baseball coach, was there. Sam Pittman was there. And just you could just feel the energy and feel the excitement in the fan base. But I'll be honest, I thought I could feel the energy in John Calipari as well. Now, obviously, if you talk to a Kentucky fan, they'll say he looks sad. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. I completely disagree. And I love Kentucky fans and I respect Kentucky fans. But at the end of the day, what I saw was a guy that I think he is excited about the fresh start. I think he is excited about a new opportunity I don't want to say to rebuild this program. He certainly needs to rebuild the team. But as he said, Eric Musselman did a great job. And as I tweeted out on Tuesday night, I believe, listen, Eric Musselman awoke a sleeping giant. Um, But John Calipari is the one. Is he the guy that can take it to the final level? Eric Musselman had him on the doorstep of the final four. Arkansas fans should forever be grateful for everything Eric Musselman did. Now it's on John Calipari the $7 million a year man, five-year deal to get the job done. But I still go back to when I saw Cal on that stage, I know Kentucky fans, whatever. What I saw was a guy who looked refreshed, reinvigorated. He was smiling. He was telling jokes. He's talking about, uh, you know, this is the only ovation I've ever gotten here. Last time I was in here, you guys were booing me. You were throwing stuff at me. I bet a lot of you were here the night I got ejected. He's poking at Joe Klein. He's poking at this. He's telling stories. It looked like Calipari was in his element and in his moment. And it's funny, right? Listen, as he said on Tuesday, sometimes things just come full circle. That's okay. Guess what? John Calipari and Kentucky, they got, you know, Kentucky fans got got tired of the one-liners, got tired of the, the quips and the jokes that they've been hearing for years. I know every other sports personality has made the analogy. It is sort of just like a marriage that had run its course. And so it's not John Calipari's fault. It's not Kentucky fans' fault. Kentucky fans, you're holding your program to an insanely high standard as you should. But it doesn't mean that John Calipari isn't still a really good coach and doesn't mean that he can't elevate a program to the final weekend of the season, which I believe is obviously his intention. And so watching him crack jokes, watching him, you know, poke at Joe Klein, he just looked like a man that was in his element and he was happy. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And I think the important thing for Arkansas fans is that it doesn't look to me like he's very content or contrite with everything that he's done. And that's something that always does worry me um, with when, when you hire an older head coach. Because when you hire an older head coach, you know what ends up happening sometimes, Right. They've had success. They've made their millions, da 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 da. And they just feel like, you know what? My way works. I'm going to do it my way. If you don't like it, deal with it. Okay. Well, I bring it up because with John Calipari, that's not going to be the case. Okay. So, like, imagine, right? So, so you, like, I'll give you an example, right? You know what I just explained? Like, the guy who's kind of done it his way and doesn't want to listen to anybody. That's like, isn't that like Jimbo Fisher, Texas AM? Like it worked at Florida State. We were awesome. This is how I'm going to do it. Deal with it. Well, John Calipari is certainly going to do things his way, but he's going to do it with a chip on his shoulder, knowing that the last place really didn't want me. And so I'm so excited to see what's next. I think he's got a new fire in his stomach to prove everybody wrong. That's who he is. He talked about it in the press conference. 
Uh, you know, I'm, I'm the son of a, a baggage handler. I'm the son of a cafeteria worker. We were, we lived Friday to Friday. It was about surviving. It was about getting that check on Friday and surviving till the next Friday when we got the next check. And I don't think that's ever left him. And I think, like I said, I think this is going to reinvigorate him. A couple other interesting things that he said in that public press conference. Now he's doing a live press availability as I'm recording here. So forgive me if I have not seen all of his comments. I thought there were a few interesting comments. One, I thought it was interesting that he said, listen, it's a new era. We're always going to be building with freshmen, but it's also about transfers. And it's also about as well, retaining players. Now, listen, I get it. Everybody is going to say all the right things and hit on all the right notes. But this was a question that I got quite a bit. I did a uh, Jacob Hester's radio show on, on Wednesday afternoon and Jacob and Chris Plank asked me, they were like, Torres, so like, do you think he's just going to go back to the full speed ahead one and done model? I don't, but I do think that John Calipari is always going to buy in and believe in freshmen and upside talent. He's always going to say, give me the best players. I will figure it out. I'll take talent and upside over whatever every day. And guess what? If that's the route that he chooses, it worked this year. And I keep saying it. And I'm not blaming Kentucky fans, and I'm not blaming Kentucky, and I'm not blaming John Calipari. But I keep everyone keeps telling me you can't win with Fred. They were a number, they were the second best team at the SEC. They got the two seed at the SEC tournament. They got the two seed at the SEC tournament. That Alabama team that made a Final Four, Kentucky destroyed them about two weeks left in the regular season. That Tennessee team that made the Elite Eight, Kentucky beat them at Thompson Bowling Arena. So he believes in his model. He believes it works. And I think he also understands I need to adjust a little bit as well. It can't just be about the freshmen. In this era, we have to get older. So I think to me, that was a very interesting element of that conversation. Secondly, I think in addition to that, another thing that stood out to me about the press conference, and I'll say this, I, I think this felt to me, and we got a lot of Kentucky fans in the mentions, tell me if you disagree. This felt like the closest thing to a dig at Kentucky that I saw during the entire press conference, which was this, is that he did say, he said a lot of people think, uh, he said, I'm always going to be a player's coach. And he said a lot of people seem to think that you can't be a player's coach and also be about winning. So for any Arkansas fan, any non-Arkansas fan that isn't a Kentucky fan, the insinuation always has been, that John Calipari, all he cares about is bringing in the high-profile players and getting them to the NBA and getting them paid and getting them rich and changing their lives. And that's obviously a noble pursuit, but it can't come at the expense of winning in college. I mean, I remember dating back to the book that I wrote on Calipari, One in Fun. Um, you know, that was the knock, right? 2009, 2010, only school ever to have five first-round picks. At least it was at the time. I don't think that's been surpassed. But he said... That night was one of the great nights in Kentucky basketball history, and Kentucky fans were not happy with it. Former players were not happy with it. And so I found that to be very interesting as well. That John Calipari said, look, you can be about players, you can be about putting them first, but you can also be about winning at this level, and now it's time to go out and do it. Finally, and I thought this was interesting as well, um, you know, basically the, the last thing that really stood out to me, and then we'll get to kind of what the next steps are, because I think there are some really interesting uh, notes about it, is that, you know, I thought the other thing that was interesting, he said this, and again, he's right, is we get better as the year goes on. And I think that's the one thing with Arkansas fans. There's going to be so much excitement. That first game, Bud Walton Arena, I get it. But it's also going to be very interesting to see if he can keep doing what he has largely done at Kentucky which is get better and better and better as the year goes on. Again, I go back to this year. We could criticize. He took some bad losses, especially early in SEC play. Not, not, not bad losses, but not good losses. Lost three straight at home. Lost to Tennessee at home. Lost to Florida at home. Now, granted, there were injuries, um, but I also think it's worth noting that, you know, he didn't win a lot of the games that people thought he should. So I'm very intrigued by that. I'm very intrigued by the fact that he said, look, we get better as time goes on. That's going to be the case this year. But John Calipari has done his introductory press conference at Arkansas, and John Calipari is your Arkansas head coach. 
with that said, let's um with that said, let's keep the party going. Because what I want to talk about now are John Calipari's first steps as head coach. I want to talk about staff. I want to talk about recruiting. And I want to do it right now. Because I think to me, that's the interesting part, right? Is that everybody, everybody, of course, the, the press conference is amazing, right? The press conference is great. Everybody's having a great time, whatever. But at the same time, as John Calipari said, I'm a grinder. I'm going to get to work. By the way, producer Matt will probably be clipping this off, so make sure to take a note, okay? Pearl, oh, look at he already did it. That's why he's the best in the business, people. All right, so John Calipari's first steps. I think there are a couple interesting things that came out over the last 24 hours that are at least worth discussing. First off, as Pete Nakos from 24, or excuse me, from On3 reported, shortly after uh, his press conference tonight, the plan is, this is from Pete Nakos at, uh, let's see what time it was earlier today. Pete Nakos at, let me see, it was about probably 9 a.m. Eastern time. He put out a tweet that I thought was very, very, very interesting. He said he was told, this was about 10 hours ago, so we're talking about, you know, 10 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. He said, I was told that after tonight's press conference, John Calipari is meeting with high-level donors to talk NIL, etc., Waltons and Tysons are expected to be there. So first off, you know that things are moving fast when you get the two biggest names in Arkansas booster lore, if you will, the Walton family and the Tyson family in the same room. And what I was told was this. We know about the relationship with John Tyson of Tyson Chicken, and we know the role that John Tyson played to get John Calipari to Arkansas. But what I was also told was the Walton's family's got a lot of money too. And the Walton family doesn't want to feel left out and don't want to let the Tyson family get all the credit for everything and all the success that potentially could come from Arkansas. And so I bring it up because what I believe is probably what a lot of you would speculate. I think, can, I think Arkansas is going to be very robust in NIL. I believe Arkansas is going to be very robust in whatever John Calipari needs to make this program successful. And I believe it's going to happen fast and aggressive and furious, okay? And it was interesting because if you read the athletic article on John Calipari, Kyle Tucker, my buddy, he may have blocked me and talked crap about me all the time, but it was well done. It was well researched. And there were some very interesting things in that article that I think are at least worth addressing. One, apparently, the riff with, with John Calipari's former AD, Mitch Barnhart, really hit a high note with that whole basketball school versus football school comment back in the Bahamas. If you remember, uh, uh, Kentucky had a summer tour in the Bahamas. And, um, and in that uh, moment, Mitch Barnhart sided with the football staff and basically told John Calipari, don't speak until, you, until I give you permission to speak. And I'm told that really rubbed him the wrong way. And basically, he felt like, he hasn't gotten the financial support that he needed to win at the highest level at Kentucky. Now, you could argue he wasn't getting the results that he did early in the in his era, but what is undeniable is, and I went, I was in Lexington probably about three years ago, the football, everything football in Lexington is insane. The, 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 the facility, the upgrades, the this, the that, um, other sports have been prioritized. And so the fact that he's getting the two big boosters together, to me, seems to indicate that he is going to have some financial resources available to him that maybe even at Kentucky were not available. It's also worth noting, in that uh, Kyle Tucker piece, John Calipari seemed to hint pretty strongly that he was the one having to deal with NIL. As we know, Kentucky just opened its first collective about four or five days, about, I think, the day of the NCAA tournament, maybe the day before the NCAA tournament. And what he said was, I was the one having to deal with NIL. Now, only he knows, but the insinuation was basically Hunter Dickinson wants to transfer to Kentucky. Well, guess what? Guess what? I'm the one that's got to deal with the numbers and figure out the money and where does it come from, and I have to raise my own money. That's not how it's supposed to work. In this era, in this world, you're supposed to kind of let the collective know, hey, these are the guys that we're interested in. Let's get the money together and make it happen. 
And so it seems as though that infrastructure is in place. And if it isn't, guess what? That's why John Calipari is meeting with the Tyson family and the Walton family on Tuesday night. I think it's also interesting to see what he does with his staff. Um, couple thoughts on the staff because it, it's moving quick and it's a lot of speculation, but I think it's informed speculation on my part. One, you saw Ronnie Brewer Jr. Well, Ronnie Brewer in the stands, of course, the son of Ron Brewer. Uh, Ronnie Brewer, great guy, a uh, longtime assistant coach in our, he's, by the way, he's from Fayetteville, obviously, played in the NBA forever, was on Eric Musselman's staff at Arkansas. I don't know this for sure. I would say with almost certainty that Ronnie Brewer is going to be on the staff of the first Arkansas staff, okay? He's in the area. It feels as though John Calipari knows him to some degree. Also, John Calipari made sure to shout out Ronnie Sr. and Ronnie Jr. at that public press conference. And I'll also say this. I saw Ronnie Brewer uh, uh, Jr. On, uh, on Wednesday morning when the official announcement came I saw Ronnie Brewer Jr., you know, tweeting out with the eyeball emoji that John Calipari's coming. So, I mean, if, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, speak too soon here, but it feels to me like Ronnie Brewer will be part of the staff. I think what will be interesting is what happens beyond that with the coaching staff. There are some rumors and some innuendo um, that Kenny Payne could potentially be uh, going with John Calipari to Kentucky. I don't think anything's finalized. I think they got to figure out, you know, his buyout with Louisville. And if he makes this much money, how much does Louisville still have to pay him? Whatever. But I was told Kenny Payne could very much be in play at the University of Arkansas as an assistant coach. For Arkansas fans who don't know Kenny Payne, he was Calipari's lead recruiter for about a five, six year period. Basically went ahead and signed pretty much everybody from about 2015, 16 till he left in about 2020, right around the time of the pandemic. He was a key part of some of the most talented teams of the John Calipari era. Um, and he was also a key part of recruiting just some insanely talented players. And listen, it didn't work as a head coach, but he is a renowned big man guy, works with big men, da da da, whatever. But he's mostly known for recruiting. He's really good at it. Um, and the insinuation is, seems to be that he would be in the mix for an assistant job. I'll also say I've sort of heard some rumors that Orlando Antigua, who is like the godfather of college basketball recruiting. He was the guy that was Calipari's right-hand man that went with him from Memphis to Kentucky, brought in, you know, helped. I don't want to I don't want to ever give to any one person all the credit because it's a joint effort, whatever. But I think there's a very good chance Orlando Antigua goes with him to Arkansas as well. Um, you know, elite recruiter. And really, by the way, it's worth noting, elite recruiter, not just at Kentucky, was at the I was at Illinois when Illinois brought in Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn. Then he goes back to Kentucky and he brings in, he helps bring in DJ Wagner and Aaron Bradshaw and, 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 and all the guys that you saw last year. Um, Shaden Sharp, I know people, don't, Kentucky fans don't want to hear about it, but Shaden Sharp obviously also as well. So that's my gut feeling on the coaching staff. And then finally, and to me, this is the important part. I think we're going to get some news on recruiting very soon. So immediately after John Calipari got hired, you know, he gets or the, the reports come out on Sunday. On Monday morning, I put out a clip from that show, from the Sunday night show, basically saying, going through the Kentucky recruiting class and saying, these are the guys that I think are going to come to Kentucky with him. And I, I named, there, there were six players committed to Kentucky. Let's see if I can get them off the top of my head. Jaden Quaintance, five-star center, McDonald's All-American. Uh, Carter Knox, five-star wing, McDonald's All-American. Boogie Flan, five-star guard, McDonald's All-American, uh, four-star wing, Billy Richmond, four-star big man, Santo Cyril, and four-star guard, Travis Perry. And what I said on uh, on Thursday, on Monday night, I guess it was Sunday night into Monday, said I, Travis Perry I don't think is going to come. As a matter of fact, of everybody that Calipari left behind, I think it's very likely um, that he stays at Kentucky. I would put him at by far the highest percentage of guy that will stay at Kentucky. Boogie Fland, he's a Northeast guy. It's worth noting on Boogie Fland. Unless I miss something, he has not officially decommitted from Kentucky yet. But as I, as everybody does in this era, I, I know for a fact that he is being contacted by a lot of different schools trying to get him to visit or commit or whatever. What is interesting, though, what is very, 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 very 
interesting is that there are two decommitments from Kentucky, two players. Well, one player didn't actually sign a letter of intent. One player did and asked out of his letter of intent. That player who let, asked for his out of his letter of intent, as I said, Jaden Quaintance, 6'9", center, forward, whatever, who played, uh, I think he played at Link last year. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick. Um, Jaden Quaintance, uh, uh, as I said, he is a five-star power forward, top 10 player in the class of 2024. He asked out of his letter of intent. It was funny, by the way, on the Sunday night show, I said, I think there's a chance he follows Calipari to Kentucky. And then there was a report that he was going to meet with Mitch Barnhart, that he was going to wait for the new head coach. Well, on Wednesday afternoon, he officially asked out of his letter of intent. Listen, he's going to be he's going to be recruited by everybody. But I will say, listen, there's obvious ties to John Calipari and the staff at Kentucky. He committed to them over pretty much everybody. I think Missouri was the finalist alongside Kentucky. But he ends up at Kentucky. I think he is probably following John Calipari to the University of Arkansas. We won't know for sure for a while, but listen, with due respect to Kentucky fans, nobody is going to stay committed to the school except maybe a Kentucky kid or two until they know who the new head coach is. And so this kid is now available. The interesting thing, if you're an Arkansas fan, and I think this is really important, okay? He has two years before he can enter the NBA draft. We talked about this on Sunday, but remember to be NBA draft eligible. You have to, you have to be 19 years old the year of the NBA draft that you're entering and have one year removed from high school. Well, Jaden Quaintance is 17 years old this year, turns 17 years old in 2024. Or is that right? Yes. He will turn 18 in 2025. He will not be 19 until 2026. So he has two years between the end of high school and when he is NBA draft eligible. And I think there was a thought maybe he goes to Kentucky for a year and then maybe he tries one of these professional options, G League Ignite, Overtime Elite, whatever. Well, G League Ignite is folded. Overtime Elite really isn't a, a developmental spot for players who are already college age. It's more of a high school and college program. And so I'm telling you, you might get Jaden Quaintance for two years. And if somebody else could keep him, Kentucky could keep him whoever. Somebody's going to get Jaden Quaintance for two years. He is a star, like frontline NBA type talent. I also think it's worth noting, and I said this on the Sunday night show as well. Carter Knox, five-star wing from Tampa, Florida, was committed to Kentucky. And he was probably the first person to decommit from Kentucky. Um, he was a, He is a player. And I think he's coming to Arkansas, and I'll tell you why. And I said this on Sunday. It is because he is a guy. He just committed to Kentucky a few weeks ago, okay? And his final four of his recruitment were Kentucky, Louisville, G League Ignite, and the South Florida Bulls. South Florida, he's from Tampa. You know, he could be the hometown kid, whatever, okay? Well, just think about what I just said. Kentucky doesn't, it doesn't have a coach right now. Louisville fired the coach that recruited him. G League Ignite doesn't exist. And so I'm not going to sit here and say it's done, done. It's I, I guarantee it 100% certainty. I don't think he's got a lot of options right now. And here's the thing. People say, oh, he, his recruitment will be open. Yeah, but guess what? His recruitment was open a month ago and he committed to John Calipari in Kentucky. And so if it's really about getting the best out of him, the most out of him, I think he's probably going to go where he is wanted. And he is probably going to go where he knows that the coaching staff has a track record of development. Also worth noting, by the way, um, if Kenny Payne does come to Arkansas, I think it makes it even better. He's obviously close with Kenny Payne and the Payne family. And the one thing I will say is we wrap the Arkansas part of this. We're going to go ahead and talk about the Kentucky, uh, what's next for them. Uh, by the way, producer Matt, if we have any Arkansas related questions, feel free to grab them. We will get to uh, we'll get to the Kentucky coaching search in a minute. But I just bring it up because, in my opinion, um, I think something is going to happen fast. Anybody who has followed John Calipari's career at Kentucky understands. Calipari, everything is planned. Everything is whatever. Everything is, is scripted is the wrong word. But what would be a bigger bang in week one as the head coach at Arkansas 
than getting a five-star McDonald's All-American to commit. And so I don't think anything's done done. I do feel pretty good that we are going to get some recruiting news by the end of this weekend and that it's going to be go time from here. Really quickly, let's see if there's any Arkansas-related questions because I do want to go ahead and update the Kentucky coaching search. Great question from Uncle Frank. Interesting to see what will become of Caleb Battle and Tremont Mark. Stay and play for Cal, ride the must bus to USC, or transfer to another program. You know, it's interesting. Um, Caleb Battle, who was unbelievable down the stretch, had like 42 in one game. I think he had like 34 at Rupp Arena. There were talks even when Mus was there. Does he go? Does he go? He's from the Northeast. Does he go? He started his career at Temple. Does he go back up north? And I, I'm not saying he would go to Temple, but a Big East school, an ACC school, something like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he does. And the same with Tremont Mark. Thought it was funny. Uh, Cal said it at his press conference, he said, uh, you, we had an introductory press, co- we had an introductory meeting with the team. It was three guys. They're all in the portal. So we'll see. Listen, I think Caleb Battle could cook. If he comes to play for John Calipari, I mean, he could be that Antonio Reeves guy from this year. Tony Reeves was an all American. He was a stud. He was whatever. I'll be interested. And then I'll be interested in the inverse is how many guys does Calipari want to keep by the way, from the Arkansas perspective, I was thinking this, like Calipari said, we want to retain players. We want to bring in transfers. You know who I think he should make a phone call to Layden blocker. The, the, the top 30 freshman that played at Arkansas this year is now in the portal. Unless I miss something, he isn't committed. That'd be a guy that I think could thrive in the John Calipari system. Any other questions on Arkansas specifically? B999. Everyone is mad. We're going to be the new UConn. There's no way, there's nothing, there's no way I can answer that without sounding like an arrogant jerk. Um, But I'll say this, listen, I get that Calipari hasn't gotten it done in the NCAA tournament, but I keep going back to, he had a, he was the second seat. We, we we all agreed this was the toughest SEC that we have ever seen, ever, ever. And John Calipari and Kentucky finished in second. Now they lost in that big, the the SEC tournament. They lost in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. And I was critical, and I should have been. Jack Golke went bonkers. Wade Taylor went bonkers in the SEC tournament. But remember, for all the criticism, three seed this year, that basically makes you a top ten team two seed in 2022. So he had a team that was literally top 10 at the end of the season in 2022 and 2024. And I think what he said on Saturday or on Tuesday was accurate. Kentucky needed a new voice, but that doesn't mean that he can't coach. And so I'll be interesting to see. I think it's going to be one of the fascinating storylines in all of sports. Arkansas is going to be must watch. Kentucky is going to be must watch as well. So I'll tell you what, Producer Matt, why don't you hold those questions until the end? Although I will say, by the way, one last Arkansas thought. Can anything stop the Big Pig Invasion? Can anything stop the Big Pig Invasion? Get your tees, AaronTorresOnline.com slash merchandise, and we will have plenty more to discuss as it pertains to the Big Pig Invasion. But at the same time, I do want to switch gears. And there are two sides to every story and there are two sides to every coin and there are two sides to pretty much, pretty much everything. I think just about everything. I'm not, you know, I don't want to go all existential on you, but I'm pretty sure pretty much everything has two sides. Um, And I do want to switch gears and I do want to talk about the Kentucky basketball coaching opening because John Calipari is now gone and with it, Kentucky needs a new basketball coach. And on Monday night, after the Final Four, we did a very big update on everything going on at Kentucky. We talked a lot about Billy Donovan. We talked about Nate Oates saying that he was not interested. And we talked about also, who else was it? Jay Wright on the broadcast saying that he wasn't interested. And so what I want to do is switch gears now and talk about the latest. So, I think the place to start is probably with Scott Drew, okay? So Scott Drew, and I know Kentucky fans know this, but for anybody in the chat that is not a Kentucky fan, forgive me for giving a little bit of background, but the insinuation is, and the insinuation has always been that when John Calipari left Kentucky, that Scott Drew 
would probably be the favorite to get the job. As a matter of fact, producer Matt thinks it's happening because he's already got the, the graphic with Scott Drew and the UK polo up there. So great work by him. Um, but listen, so with Kentucky, Scott Drew has always been perceived to be the favorite. And my stance has always been, listen, is that, look, when it comes to Kentucky, what I truly believe is this. If you're Mitch Barnhart, and we'll see if he's doing this or not, we're going to get some answers to that probably in the next 24 hours. I do believe you have to make the godfather home run grand slam offer to Jay Wright, to Dan Hurley. You have to call Nate Oates. You have to call Brad Stevens. You have to call Billy Donovan. Um, but I don't believe that anybody, I don't believe that anybody believes this coaching search will get beyond Scott Drew. And it seems as though Scott Drew is the focal point of this search, although it's worth noting we got an interesting development on Dan Hurley as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. But from the Scott Drew perspective, listen, Wednesday was all about Scott Drew, okay? Scott Drew, a uh, couple things stand out. First off, John Rothstein reported early in the day that Kentucky was set to meet with uh with 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 um was set to meet with Scott Drew. I think it the pr exact quote was in the near future. I want to read what John what what uh John Rothstein tweeted because I think the context here matters a little bit. So, let's see what he said. This was at about 10 a.m. Eastern time. Sources, Kentucky plans to officially meet with Baylor Scott Drew regarding its head coaching vacancy in the near future. I don't know if John, listen, John's great at what he does. I don't know if when he said the near future that was intentional or not, but it seemed as though it might be because of the fact that it's worth noting that there was some major plane tracking going on out of Lexington, okay? Because there were reports that there was a plane going from Lexington to Waco on Wednesday morning. Now, I'll be honest. I am not the plane tracking aficionado in any way, shape, or form, okay? Many of you are great at all the technology, great at all the software. I don't really get how it works. I just know someone told me Shohei Otani was going to the Blue Jays and it ended up being the guy from Shark Tank's plane. So the point I'm trying to make is, is it's not a foolproof science, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But at the same time, what stands out to me about the, the, the Scott Drew rumors is a couple things. Near future is very vague, but it does feel as though Kentucky has focused on Scott Drew. Now, what was interesting was what Scott Drew put out on Twitter. Producer Matt, go ahead and pop that up. This was Scott Drew on his Twitter feed. Great lunch spot in Waco on a rainy day. No better friend and supporter than Eric Shero and Alliance Bank. Well, shout out Eric Shero, shout out Alliance Bank. I don't know if you are a plant. I don't know if you are there on purpose. I don't know if you are there because you are helping finalize a Scott Drew extension. But that was an interesting development. Scott Drew basically saying, everybody thinks I'm on a plane back to Lexington. Well, guess what? I'm out here at lunch. Uh, I'm out here at lunch just having lunch with Eric Shero on a rainy afternoon. Of course, because Kentucky fans are the craziest, John Calipari always used to say, you people are crazy. Apparently, some Kentucky fans had fun with it. Apparently, people tracked down Scott Drew at the restaurant and said, go Big Blue, we need you in Lexington, all that good stuff. And then a mere hours later, my buddy Justin Rowland put this out on Twitter. It was a bunch of five-star reviews from Mi Casita Restaurant in Waco. And a bunch of them basically said, great spot. Uh, this is, uh, th it's a great spot for, uh, for Scott Drew's last meal. And uh, thank you for your service, but we'll take it over from here. Let me read them directly. Uh, let me see if I can pull them up really quickly. My, my computer's going slow. Five-star restaurant says Drew Grader. Scott Drew's last meal before flying to Lexington on a private plane. And then Joe Moore tweeted, absolutely the best place in Waco. Soon to be operating, opening a satellite location in Lexington, Kentucky. BBN, sign the contract, big boy. So the Scott Drew perspective, listen, it'll be interesting. Now, I will say this about Scott Drew. It has never appeared as though either side is in a rush to get it done. Feels like uh, Mitch uh, Mitch Barnhart is is respectfully pursuing him, um, but at the same time, Scott Drew. And let me just say this about Scott Drew: as of Wednesday night, it's about nine Eastern time as I'm recording here, so things are subject to change. I don't want people mad at me on YouTube or in the comment section, but it feels as though it's it, it, it's hard to know this. Has Scott Drew even been offered the job? But then would Scott Drew take it if he got the job? That's the interesting part. That's where it gets interesting. Because I haven't seen anything concrete that he's been offered the job. 
It's hard to know if they even met on Wednesday. But then I also saw reports that Scott Drew is struggling with the decision to leave Baylor. And the one thing I'll say about Scott Drew, listen, he has been earmarked as the next head coach at Kentucky probably since he won that 2021 national title. That was really when things were starting to fall off for Cal. Baylor is awesome. They win a title. But it's one thing to be earmarked. It's one thing to maybe have a conversation with Mitch Barnhart here or there. It's quite another thing to, in the moment, have to actually make the decision. And oh, by the way, make the decision in an offseason where you also were courted by Louisville. You turn them down. You don't think Kentucky is going to open anytime soon. And you're just like, okay, I thought about Louisville. I'm coming back. This is where I'm going to be for at least 2024, 2025, and I'll reevaluate my options. Then Calipari pulls a fastball. Calipari out of nowhere decides to um, decides to go to Arkansas. And now all of a sudden, it's here. It's the moment. You got to decide. And, and just like John Calipari had been at Kentucky for 15 years, Scott Drew has been at Baylor for like 20. And so it can't be an easy decision. Uh, if I was still handicapping at 845, 9 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday into Wednesday, I would guess that, yes, Scott Drew will probably be the next head coach at Kentucky. The one thing I will say, I think movement has, it, assuming that he is the guy, and we're going to get to the Dan Hurley side of things here momentarily, assuming Scott Drew is the guy, I think you got you got all day Wednesday. You got to make a decision by Wednesday night. I know that it's the portal. I know that there will be time, but Kentucky's got to go to plan B, plan C, plan D if you are plan A. And so we'll see. I would expect that by Wednesday night, if Scott Drew is the head coach at Kentucky, there will be a report now, much like the Calipari thing. There might not be an announcement from the school. There might not be a press conference. There are negotiations. These things take time. But at the same time, I think Scott Drew, if he is the guy that Mitch Barnhart wants, I think it's going to happen quick. Now, what's interesting about that is because the question becomes, as I said, is Scott Drew the guy? And has he even been offered yet? Because I thought it was interesting. The Baylor media people, the people that cover Baylor said he's struggling with the decision. Maybe I'm missing something. I haven't seen that he's officially been offered the job. And it's also interesting, and it's also worth noting, because we got some very interesting news on Dan Hurley. Now, a couple things on Dan Hurley. First of all, you know, listen, Dan Hurley has been asked several times over about the, about the Kentucky coaching job. He was asked about it after the national championship. Said, uh, I, ain't enter I ain't entering the transfer portal, okay? Basically saying I'm happy where I am. Um, he also, it's worth noting on top of that, I uh, was on Colin Cowherd, gave a long answer about other opportunities and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, this is what he said. I've got a long career of turning down jobs or more money to stay in places. I was happy. The opportunity to go for a three peat is the only thing on anyone's mind here in stores. So that is what Dan Hurley said about the Kentucky job. And in my opinion, I don't think he's lying now. Others will say, well, he said the same thing after the Rhode at Rhode Island and he ended up at UConn. I get it. I do. What I will also say is this, is it is one thing to turn something down, is one thing to say you're not interested. It's one thing to say you're happy. But producer Matt, go ahead and post post the, the tweet of the reported contract offer via, um, I think his name is Jeff Drum. I apologize, Jeff. He's a good reporter. Um but according to Jeff Drum, who works for the rival site, he says Kentucky's initial offer to Dan Hurley is $11 million a year over five to seven years. As Justin Rowland points out, that is more than Kirby Smart currently makes at Georgia, and Mitch and UK, that's the AD, will go higher if rejected or matched by UConn. So I'll be honest. I don't know Jeff Drummond well at all. I do know Justin Rowland, and Justin Rowland is great at what he does. Um, and I bring it up to say, I cannot confirm if there is an offer out or not. I cannot confirm if the two sides have spoken. What I can confirm is a couple things. One, I truly believe that Dan Hurley, when he said what he said on Cowherd, when he said what he said at the national championship game, I do believe that he was speaking in the truth in the moment. What I would also say, and to me, this is very important, is the following. Is that I have said, since before John Calipari left, I said after the Gonzaga game, that was the first time we did our coaching candidates list. After the Gonzaga game, third straight home loss, we did a coaching candidates list, okay? I said it then, and then I said it after the Oakland game. I said, if 
you are going to go and get a big name head coach to use the old quote, we can't pussyfoot around, okay? I don't even know what that really means, but I think it means here. You have to pull the Scott Woodward move. And people don't know who Scott Woodward is. Scott Woodward is the AD at LSU. And Scott Woodward as an AD basically says, no name is off the table, okay? I'm going to raise the money. I'm going to go after the biggest names in the sport, and I'm going to make them say no. That's how we got Kim Mulkey as his basketball coach. You can like Kim Mulkey, hate her. She's a great coach. That's how we got Brian Kelly as a football coach. I think he's awesome. Others would disagree, whatever. But that is what he does. He goes big game hunting, biggest names available. Go get them. We'll figure out the money later. And I've said, that's how Mitch Barnhart has to run this coaching search. If this is true, if the $11 million a year contract is on the table, then shout out Mitch Barnhart because I didn't know if he had it in him to just go out and be the alpha that you need to be to court Dan Hurley. Now, ultimately, I still think it's a long shot. I don't think it's going to happen. I think UConn is going to give him a sizable raise. I think he was the sixth highest paid coach in college basketball this year. Um, and I think, you know, a couple other things. Listen, I think his family, which is from the Northeast, is happy there. His parents are within driving distance of stores. Uh, his wife is a Jersey girl. I think she likes living in Connecticut. I don't want to speak for her or the family, but that seems to be the impression that I get. And the one thing I'll say, it's not always about money. Nate Oates shot that rumor down before they could even get going. He released a statement before anything could get going. And so Nate Oates could have made, uh, got a, gotten a pay raise. Nate Oates could have gotten more at Kentucky, but he's happy at Alabama. And I think it's the same for Dan Hurley. He's going to be well compensated. Like Nate Oates, he was a high school coach not that long ago. And I think the, I think he said at some point, and I missed this quote, I think he said, I just started making money. I don't want to get a divorce. And the insinuation is his family is happy in Connecticut. So listen, if there is an ele a seven-year, $77 million contract on the table, then I think, one, credit to Mitch Barnhart for making it happen. Two, We'll see if at least he's got to sit down and talk with, with, with his beautiful wife and all that good stuff. And I mean, beautiful in a, not a condescending way, just, you know, he's got to talk to his wife about it, whatever. But as of right now, you know, I'll believe that Dan Hurley is leaving when I see it, but I will give Mitch Barnhart in Kentucky credit is like, if, if he put together this deal and if he placed it in front of Dan Hurley's representatives credit to him, cause I didn't think he had it in him. Lastly, on the Kentucky side, let me go ahead and say this really quick. Um, I want to go ahead and, and, and do a couple things. By the way, my phone is buzzing, and I look down. We got some big pig orders. So thank you for everybody who ordered uh, our big pig invasion tea. We'll get back to that in a minute. But really quickly, the, uh, the other question about the Kentucky coaching search that to me is interesting is this. Let's say Dan Hurley, I've won two national championships. I'm going for three, okay? Let's say that on top of that, this is the part that is interesting to me. What if Scott Drew actually says no? Because that's the part that I haven't heard anybody talk about yet. I'm not saying he will. If I was handicapping it, I would expect him to be the next head coach of Kentucky. But what I haven't really heard is the scenario where Scott Drew says no and who would potentially be next. Now, I do think the Billy Donovan stuff that we talked about on Monday night, it feels like it's cooled down a little bit. I think if you're Mitch Barnhart, you at least have to circle back that well. Again, you know, uh, Billy Donovan, of course, is an NBA head coach. Regular season ends on Saturday. Obviously, there's a play-in that the Bulls will probably be involved in. Um, but I do think if if you're Mitch Barnhart, is, is Billy Donovan the next option? If Billy Donovan's staying in the NBA, I'm very intrigued where you go from there. Because is the answer, who is the answer? Would it be Bruce Pearl? I think Bruce Pearl likes, uh, you know, I think Bruce Pearl would be great at Kentucky. I think he'd be awesome as a matter of fact. And I think no, no disrespect producer Matt, who's an Auburn grad, you know, I, I feel like he's kind of done everything you can do at Auburn. I mean, maybe there's one step more to go to a national championship, but Bruce Pearl, in my opinion, is a guy that would thrive at Kentucky. He is a guy that in my opinion um, would embrace you know, the craziness of Kentucky fans. And I mean that in a good way. Kentucky is a 24 hour, 365 a year commitment where you are the focal point of an entire state. And I think, I think Bruce Pearl would thrive in that. Now the thing with Bruce Pearl is a couple things. One, he's 60 years old. 
Now, if you've watched him, he's still got plenty of energy. He looks great. He's in great shape, whatever. But do you want to commit to a guy that's maybe going to be there six, seven years? By the way, I would if I thought he was the best candidate. I don't really care. The other thing I've heard, you know, I, I haven't been able to confirm this, but you see stuff that, that he has asked Auburn to make Stephen Pearl, his younger son, the coach in waiting. My understanding is Auburn may have been hesitant to do that. From you know, I've talked to a few Auburn people about that. And so my guess would be that Kentucky probably uh, is not going to be willing to do that either. Does that make Bruce Pearl a candidate? Does it not make it a candidate? I don't know. A couple other names. Listen, I would personally go after Chris Beard. And by the way, I, I know I feel like I, I I pump up Chris Beard for all of these jobs. I thought Louisville should go after him. I thought Arkansas should go after him. I think Arkansas did go after him. I have no relationship with Chris Beard. So this isn't me just like stumping for my guy. Oh, Torres is trying to get Chris Beard so he can get access. No, I don't think Chris Beard knows who I am. And that's okay. I'm fine with it. I do think he's a very good basketball coach though. And, you know, it was funny. You know, the thing with Chris Beard is that, you know, like, like missed the NCAA tournament this year at Ole Miss. Okay. But I did see, I thought this was funny, is I've seen a lot of the, well, you know, his last two years at at, at uh, Texas Tech weren't great. You know, first year at Texas makes the NCAA tournament. First year at Ole Miss misses the NCAA tournament. I get it. What I would say to that is this. Chris Beard, in his second year at Texas, before he got fired, had the number one team in the country. He had Texas at number one in the polls. You can like him, you can dislike him, you can argue, you can this, you can that. But as I've said many times, when he was at Texas, he said, we're a blue blood. We're the new blood. I believe I have everything I need to win at the highest level of Texas, and I want to leave Texas. I want it to be the next Kentucky. And so he was recruiting five stars. He got commitments from uh, Dylan uh, Dylan Mitchell, who was obviously on the team last year, Ontario Morris. He had commitments from Ron Holland and A.J. Johnson, two five stars before he got fired. He had Texas operating at a very high level, and it's worth noting, even after he got fired, they made it to the Elite Eight. So I believe that's a guy that you give him the resources Kentucky would. Ooh, buddy. That's a dude that I think would win at the highest level. Now, the question is, Mitch Barnhart, the AD, I don't think that that's his kind of guy. Mitch Barnhart ultimately is kind of a conservative type guy, and I don't mean that in any type of political way. I just, I don't think he's going to be super aggressive with guys that have a checkered history. Chris Beard, arrested. I understand the charges were dropped. I'm not here to be a lawyer, okay? But I think that's going to be a turnoff for some schools. I just do. And I think it would be for Kentucky. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Chris Beard. I think, by the way, same with Will Wade. Will Wade, I, I just think I have no problem with Will Wade, clearly. I had him on this pod about three weeks ago. I think he's a great coach. But uh, somebody, Jacob Hester, actually asked me about him the other day. And I said, doesn't feel like a Mitch Barnhart guy. Feels like Will Wade's, you know, one year away from getting back into the power conference structure, back to being at an elite school with elite resources, whatever. And he said on this show, he said, the plan was when I got to McNeese State was for it to be a two-year commitment and for me not to just leave after one year. Now, if Kentucky calls, you got to take the call. But I don't know that they would. It doesn't really feel like the right fit. And so to me, um, to me, yeah, it still feels like Scott Drew, but I think it gets very, very, very interesting if Scott Drew were to say no. All right. We're about an hour into this bad boy. Producer Matt, I know it's hard. The, the live chat is humming. Let's do our best to get to a few questions before we get out of here. And I should mention, by the way, as soon as Kentucky officially has a coach, we're going to go live. So just be ready. Be prepared. Make sure to uh, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. What, what do we got, Producer Matt? <sighs> Jason Green. Jason Green, you know, print this comment out and put it in the Hall of Fame. I think you're dead right, Jason Green. Jason Green says, this whole Cal situation is a win-win for both sides. Cal is re-energized and BBN is as well. We are excited for the first time in a few years, especially if we, if we land Drew or Donovan. I think this is the take. I, I don't, like, not every, you know, not everything is for life, okay? Not everybody is Nick Saban that gets to retire at the top at the end of his career. John Calipari, listen, when John Calipari got to Kentucky, he said, this is a five, six year commitment. Okay. People don't last at Kentucky for 10, 12, 15 years. And really he made it 15 years. Now you could argue the last four or so were really down. Now I think there were some unique circumstances that really hurt him. The pandemic, I think hurt him for 2021 because he didn't really 
you know, he couldn't be with the team and he, he's a guy that needs to have his hands on you. And I think 2022 had hurt him because he wasn't out recruiting and he had to rely on the portal. 2023, I thought would have been pretty good if he had Shane Sharp. The point I'm trying to make is that I agree. It had run its course. I thought Cal, listen, we talked about it to open the show, but I stand by what I said. I think Cal's statement was perfect. I think what he said in that statement, you know, about, I think it dropped probably about 3, 4 p.m. Eastern time, the, the, on his couch, the, the, the blue pullover. I thought it was perfect. What he said was, listen, none of this is forever. And it, Kentucky needs a new voice. I think Kentucky did need a new voice. Listen, it's been talked about and talked about and talked about again. If he had stayed at Kentucky, and I don't think he would have left for anything, but if he had stayed at Kentucky, it would have been so toxic. And every loss would have been the biggest thing in the world. And everything would have been overanalyzed. And by the way, Kentucky fans, you have every right to feel that way. Because you've been let down in the 2024 NCAA tournament, in the 2024 SEC tournament, in the 2022 NCAA tournament, in the 2023 NCAA tournament. You had a right to feel that way. But Cal has a right to feel like I've still got some juice left in this tank. And based on this regular season, I think he does. Again, second in the toughest SEC that ever there was. So I agree with Jason. I think this has recharged everybody. Now it's on Mitch Barnhart. you got to get a guy that's going to make this fan base happy. The fascinating question is, what would happen if you don't end up with Scott Drew? Or Dan Hurley, for that matter. Or Billy Don. Got to get one of those three. If you don't, it starts to get a little sketchy. Got any more questions? I know we do. We got a ton. For producer from my boy Casey, who says, I'm the baddest mf -er. what do you say? Something about I'm the baddest mf -er to host a college hoops podcast. Casey says, do you think people are overreacting with Hurley not giving a firm no? Press conference after Natty was weird and responses are odd. Kentucky, Kentucky is doubling his salary. Well, here's the thing, though. So, Casey, it's a great question. In no way, shape, or form am I criticizing you. People are saying he never denied interest. Well, he did deny interest. The Colin Cowherd question, and it was a great question by Colin. I love Colin. He's been great to me. But he didn't ask, will you be the next head coach at Kentucky, right? Like when Nick Saban in 2007, he was asked about Alabama. He said, will you be the head coach? And he said, for the last time, I will not be the next head coach at Alabama. To my understanding, I don't think Dan Hurley has ever been asked, will you be the next head coach at Kentucky? And by the way, there's only so many ways you can say I'm not interested. I, By the way, everyone keeps saying it's not a firm no. I've heard three or four firm no's. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure if somebody wanted to interview him and somebody would say yes or no, one word answer, will you be the next head coach of Kentucky? That'll put him on the spot. But how many times do you have to answer? when you? And, and by the way, Casey, and I love the question. I'm not criticizing at all. But you say the national championship was odd. I don't think it was odd. I think he was being honest. I think that's who Dan Hurley is. He's like, I don't, he's like, I'm not entering the transfer portal. I'm happy here. And then he said, you know, I just started making money. I'm not giving it all away to my wife if she divorces me. I think that's clever. I think it's fun. I, I, I don't think it's odd. If you're a Kentucky fan, I understand why you're, why you are holding out hope that maybe it does mean something that it doesn't. But again, until he is at, like, <laughs> he's been asked three, four, five times. He said no every single time, but to say he didn't give a firm no just doesn't seem fair to me. Because he did give a firm no, but he also wasn't asked, will you be the next head coach at Kentucky? By the way, let me say this. Producer Matt, you put up the next question, but let me say this. I want to make this abundantly clear. We have a large audience right now. You need to be subscribed to YouTube and you need to be subscribed to the podcast. And let me tell you why. I said this the other night. Do you understand how much freaking content is coming your way probably over the next eight weeks? Speaking of divorces. I'm probably going to end up getting one because guess what? Over the next eight weeks, think about this. John Calipari needs to fill 11 scholarships at Arkansas. Well, he's not going to fill all of them, but you know, nine, 10, whatever. Number two, Kentucky needs a new head coach. Now, I think it's going to happen. It better happen for Mitch Barnhart's sake in the next 72 hours. But then Kentucky needs to find 11 new players. So you're going to be getting a lot of commitment videos out of Torres, okay? Arkansas, Kentucky. It's worth noting UConn's got major work to do in the portal. So make sure you're subscribed because we have so we're gonna th listen. It's like John Rothstein says, we sleep in May. I'm not one of these guys that, that gets home from the final four and thinks my work is done. My work is frankly only beginning. 
And let me also say this. I am so grateful for the number of you that tuned in on whatever it was. I think it was uh, Sunday night. We set all sorts of records. I am so insanely grateful. Um, and I just, I, I can't express enough how much I appreciate the content that you guys are consuming. You know, it's funny. Last year, we had a record-setting April, like for the spring, like anything non-football related. We're going to pass the April numbers here probably tonight. So by tomorrow, we will have done more total views in April than we did all of last year. And last year was the most we've ever had in March, April, May, June, July. So thank you for your support. Shout out John Calipari, by the way, because you certainly helped. But I cannot thank you all enough for your support. I know we got more questions, Matt. I know there's a ton in there. Let's let's get to whatever we got. Santo Cyril just got released. So listen, we're going to clip off that uh, that clip from the recruiting. It's already going to be outdated. Producer Matt, you feel like doing some editing tonight? Because we might have to get a little clip going here. So according to Mr. Warlight, Santo Cyril, four-star forward, from Overtime Elite, has just asked out of his letter of intent from Kentucky. So I did not mention him in the recruiting. Uh, we'll add this to the end of that recruiting video. Um, but as we're recording, Santo Cyril, four-star center, asked out of his letter of intent. Listen, this guy, I'll be honest, and this is no disrespect, he's just not that um, He's not that five-star, can't-miss, one-and-done type guy. But he is a program guy. Calipari said, I want to build through freshmen, retaining players and transfers. All three are important to me. And so I bring it up because that's the kind of guy that could come to Arkansas for two, three years. Play. He's a physical, bruising, low post guy. Um, very, you know, very physical. Almost like, I don't want to say Oscar Sheboy because Oscar Sheboy was national player of the year. But that kind of body type, that kind of physicality. And maybe in two or three years, he develops into something. But listen, you know, Cal Perry's going to bring some guys with him. And that's the other thing, too. We didn't even talk about the possibility of him bringing Kentucky players with him. But that's also, I think, why it's important for Mitch Barnhart to get this hire done soon. DJ Wagner's got a decision to make. Big Z's got a decision to make. Um, Aaron Bradshaw's in the portal. But I actually think staying at Kentucky kind of makes sense for him. So uh, it makes sense for him if Scott Drew's the head coach, I should say. So anyway, Santo Cyril is, is in uh, available. He's the kind of guy that I think Arkansas could use. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a Razorback. What other questions we got, Matt? What other questions we got? For the producer, from Cole, thoughts on Rick Pitino to UK? I said this on Sunday. Bluntly, I think he's happy. I I, I truly do. And, and listen, at this point, Pitino ain't chasing anything other than, you know, the ring, right? That's That's all he cares about. But what I will say is this, and I said this the other day, is... You know, Rick Pitino, and I know he has a relationship with the state of Kentucky. I know that he was down there, I think, at Keeneland this weekend, or Churchill Downs, one of the two. I don't, I think he's happy being in New York. He's a New York guy, and it's interesting because when he got hired out of Iona, it was well known. There's only two places on planet Earth that he wants to live, New York City or Miami. And so when the St. John's job came open, that was why it was so important for St. John's to strike. You have this guy in the city already. This is where he wants to be. And I mentioned this the other night is I think it was Texas Tech. It was Texas Tech that really kind of came after him. And the other day, he's like, I don't want to live in Lubbock. I think Georgetown, everyone said that he was a, 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 a Georgetown had a shot. I don't believe he ever, they ever had a shot because I don't believe he ever wanted to live in Washington, D.C. And so I bring it up to very simply say, um, I think he's staying in New York. But listen, I, if I was Mitch Barnhart, I'd give him a call. You know, you get down pretty far down that list. Um, you get pretty far down that list. I, I I think he's a call you have to make. And by the way, um, Cole did ask a realistic top three. Listen, I, so I don't know that Dan Hurley is realistic, but if you're going to offer him $11 million, then I think he's, he's in play. And by the way, even if you don't get him, I don't blame Mitch Barnhart for making the call. I can't criticize Mitch Barnhart for making the call and getting a no when I've been saying from day one, that that's what you have to do if you're Kentucky. So I would say after him, I think the, the three that they have is right. I would maybe be prioritizing Billy Donovan a little bit more, but I also understand that Billy Donovan has two weeks left in his season and you can't wait until the end of the season to talk to him. You can't wait two and a half weeks for Billy Donovan to take this job because the portal's moving fast and you can't wait until then. And by the way, I guess you could, 
if you knew it was a definitive yes, but I don't know that it's going to move fast enough. And so I think Scott Drew is the realistic one. It makes sense. If it's not Scott Drew, I would go get Chris Beard personally. I don't know that that's what Mitch Barnhart is going to do. By the way, I think it'll be interesting if, 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 if Scott Drew isn't the guy, then that's when the pressure really starts to ramp up on Mitch Barnhart. And that, that's where the fans have to get involved and say, Mitch, you can't have an ego about this. It can't be about bringing in a choir boy with no, with no past whatever. Bruce Pearl, Chris Beard, Will Wade, Sean Miller, they all have something in their past. Nobody's perfect. And by the way, I'm not comparing NCAA violations to what Chris Beard is accused of. I hope everybody understands that. Doesn't change the fact, though, that in my opinion, um, in my opinion, you know, you got to move fast if you're if you're Kentucky. For producer, woo damn pig says Spawn Quest Gaming. You know what I say to that? I say, can anyone stop the big big invasion? It's so fun. It's a thing. These guys are selling like hotcakes. Aaron Torres, online.com slash merchandise. We have sold a ton. I appreciate your support. We've sold a ton just since we've gotten on air here. Truly appreciate everything uh, that we're doing here. It's Listen, I'll say this too. This is great for college basketball. I think the Calipari thing had become stale. I think he became a punchline. But I think now that he's at Arkansas, I think everybody understands probably wasn't that bad, but he probably was never going to get to the standard consistently that he had set at Kentucky. By the way, Arkansas fans, I don't think that's a hot take. I don't think you're going to four Final Fours in a five-year period. By the way, if you do, ooh, buddy, you're going to have to name some stuff after him. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of, a lot of buildings named that Bud Walton Arena, John Calipari, and Nolan Richardson Court. But the point I'm trying to make, I think he's still got a lot of juice left in the tank. And I'm telling you, this is going to be such a fascinating thing because – Kentucky is always going to get coverage. I'm going to keep talking Kentucky when they get a big this, when they get a big that, when they do this, when they do that. But Arkansas is going to get a lot of coverage too, and it's going to be fascinating. Oh, by the way, one more thought on the coaching uh, carousel stuff. So if you remember, there was a report, um, there was a report that buyout money would not be an issue for Nate Oates. I've, I should have mentioned this in the, the coaching carousel part, but it's okay. That basically, the insinuation was if NATO was interested, we will pay his $18 million buyout. That to me is interesting because to me, that now potentially makes Mick Cronin a candidate. Remember, Mick Cronin has about a $15 million or so buyout at UCLA. I believe he wanted the Louisville job. I believe he may have been even interested in the Ohio State job, but he couldn't get those because he, they couldn't get him out of that contract. Kentucky's willing to pay $18 million to get Nate Oates out of his buyout. Maybe Mick Cronin $15 million. Now, you can debate, is Mick Cronin this, is Mick Cronin that? The one thing I'll say about Mick Cronin, um, one, the NIL I don't believe was great this year. At least that was his argument. Remember, he said UCLA was the Cincinnati Reds and everybody else is the Dodgers, which you know was an interesting comment in and of itself. But I just bring it up because the other thing about UCLA, it's really hard, or it was until this offseason, to get transfers into that school. Now, I think they've kind of found a way to figure it out because they've gotten two in Sky Clark, ironically, from Louisville, and, of course, Kobe Johnson. I don't think Mick Cronin would be bad at Kentucky, though. I think he'd bring that edge, that physicality, that toughness, that mental toughness, and I do think he'd be able to recruit at a really high level. I just think he's struggling with that at UCLA because I think up until this year, it was hard to get transfers in. What was the question, man? I apologize for talking right over it. This is a great question because I've thought a lot about this. Do you think Tyler Eulis stays at Kentucky as part of the coaching staff, or is it more likely, in my opinion, it is that Cal gets him come to, to come to Arkansas? So Tyler Eulis was the 2016 SEC Player of the Year at Kentucky. Has had some injuries, he's a little bit small, didn't make it in the NBA, and he's been part of John Calipari's staff at Kentucky for the last year or so. I don't have a great answer on that. I don't. Um, I think he's loyal to Kentucky. But as we've learned the last couple of days, there are a lot of guys that are really loyal to John Calipari. I mean, DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall, Tyrese Maxey, all these guys have spoken out about what Cal has meant to them, what he's done for them, all that good stuff. And so, listen, I think if the next head coach makes Tyler Eulis a great offer, he'll stay. I think if not, he'll follow Cal. I think what'll be interesting is Ronnie Brewer, I think, is going to be part of that staff. Now, staffs these days, you know, there's just a lot of, you know, 
video guys and whatever. I don't know if Ronnie Brewer would be one of the five on-court assistants, but that wouldn't surprise me either. Ronnie Brewer is a heck of a recruiter, a heck of a coach. Any more before we get out of here? This is great, man. I appreciate everybody joining us. We are at uh, about 700 people here an hour in. For producer, you think if Scott Drew was hired, you get VJ Edge? Come listen. Torres already got the wheels turning. That's a video I plan on doing day one. So VJ Edgecomb, for people who do not know, five-star, top three-ish player. Um, McDonald's All-American is committed to Baylor. I think he would follow Scott Drew to Kentucky. Yes. Now, I think people would try to get him out. Remember, St. Je- he's from New York City area. I think he's from Haiti originally, maybe? But he, he's played his ball in New York City. And remember, Rick Patino has been very vocal about we have as much NIL as anybody in college basketball. So can they convince him to go? Could Duke convince him to go? But I do think Scott Drew would bring VJ Edgecombe with him. For people who don't know, not only is he a McDonald's All American, but listen, there's a there, there's a what do they what do the kids say? There's levels to this. VJ Edgecombe is like elite one of one type level. Was talking to one of the big recruiting experts, and he said in this class, it's Cooper Flag one, Ace Bailey, the kid who's going to Rutgers two. And he said, VJ Edgecombe is right behind him in terms of just superstar upside potential. So yes, to answer your question, I think absolutely. And that was a great question. And that's a video you might get if Scott Drew ends up being the head coach. Anything else? I know there's just a lot of, a lot. Of, I see a lot of pig emojis in the uh, in the chat tonight for some strange reason, trying to figure out, figure, got to put do some math on that. What a night. By the way, I, I like the um, people that were oh, John Calipari didn't do the the pig call. What does that mean? It's like, don't think it really means anything. I really don't. I think John Calipari's re-energized. I think he's excited. Um, I think it's going to be good for college basketball. Like I said, by the way, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have the, the YouTube channel notifications on because whenever Kentucky gets a head coach, we're going live. But then beyond that, and I think this is the important part, is that in addition – We're going to have so much freaking content. There's going to be so much content on this channel. Like, it's crazy. Like I said, this month has already been banana land in terms of the the volume of content that we've created. Um, And that isn't going to change anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody's support. Uh, You know, the the page is humming right now. We're well over 35,000 subscribers on that page. Um, we're going to close in on over 200,000 views just in this month. Are there any NBA guys that may come other than Billy? Oh, I forgot to mention Billy Richmond too, as far as a player that could come. Any other questions, Matt? Any other questions? I may do a quick stroll myself here in the YouTube chat. Let's see. Left countries wide open threes this year. Da, 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 da. I hear UK is looking at Oakland's coach and Golki transferring. I think Golki's out of eligibility. Too soon. Too soon. Do I think Pearl is the best fit? Do I think Pearl is the best fit? I think he's got the best personality for the job. Um, I think Dan Hurley's the best fit because I think Dan Hurley literally has won everywhere and can win everywhere. We talked about it on the national championship broadcast. One at the high school level at St. Benedict's in Jersey. One at Wagner, the lowest of low levels, no money, no resources, whatever. One at Rhode Island, good mid-major job, not an elite mid-major job, and obviously is one at, 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 at UConn. I think the thing is, I think Dan Dan Hurley likes to kind of do stuff on his terms. I think he likes to keep the basketball the basketball. And obviously being the Kentucky coach, it's a lot more than just that. I think there. I think that's also my concern with 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 Scott Drew, is exactly what I've said all along. Is like I like Scott Drew, but does he know every single thing that comes with that job? That you got to throw out first pitches, you got to be kissing babies. You know the one thing Calipari did, and Kentucky fans know this. We'll kind of start to get out of here, uh, even though we got like three thousand live viewers right now, which is insane. Um, the thing about Cal is that. He was great in the community. He talked about it tonight with Arkansas. We're going to be out in the community. We're going to be at your events. We're going to bring the players. We're going to bring kids that want to be part of that community. And so I just don't think people fully appreciate everything that Cal did in that community. And I think it's going to be tough for a coach to replicate that. 
Coach Cal did the summer tours where he would take a train with his team to remote parts of the state to do clinics and camps and stuff like that. I don't know if that's Scott, something Scott Drew would do. So I think from a personality fit, Bruce Pearl probably is the right answer. I think Billy Donovan, if he were to ever come back, he at least has an understanding of what that is. Scott Drew, I just I don't know that he knows what it is to be a coach at that level, but it doesn't mean he can't win. And by the way, it's kind of like Nick Saban. You know, the Alabama football coach has the same responsibilities as the Kentucky coach, and Nick Saban just won so much that he was like, guess what? I ain't doing it. Suck it up, deal with it, whatever. What else we got here? Who would be a dark horse candidate that's super young but also a basketball genius? It's a nuanced question. The problem is if you get to that guy, people aren't going to ex accept the hire, okay? They're just not because you're Kentucky. You can't be bringing the super smart basketball guy. But the answer to that is probably Bucky McMillan from Sanford. 40 years old, just went to the NCAA tournament at Sanford, plays full court press, style, this, that, the other thing. He's going to be a high major coach at some point. I don't think you can get Kentucky at this point. And I'll say this, Zach Hancock, Hancock great question. You know who actually kind of fits that bill that has coached in the SEC is Will Wade. Will Wade, people, I, I, I think there's a total misrepresentation of who he is and what he's about. That dude just loves ball, man. He just loves basketball, loves being in the gym, loves being around his players, loves coaching, loves learning. Um, and he's obviously really good at it, right? They won 30 games at his first year. Um, but again, I don't think Will Wade is a candidate, whether he should be or not. See, if there's one or two, then we may get out of here. By the way, again, Arkansas fans in the chat, reminder, Big Pig Invasion, baby. The Big Pig Invasion is here. The Big Pig Invasion has come, and it's time to get your merch now. Big Pig Invasion, Aaron Torres, online.com slash merchandise. Aaron Torres, online.com slash merchandise. All right. Let's see here. Todd Golden is an interesting name. Todd Golden is, is listen, I've said this before. Todd Golden, to me, I was very impressed by Todd Golden this year. And the thing I respect about Todd Golden, the Florida head coach, he is confident in who he is and what he's about. By the way, you Kentucky fans that don't want freshmen, he has been very vocal. He's like, unless a freshman grows up a Gators fan and he's good enough to play right away, like a top 20 recruit, we're not recruiting him. Just says you can't, he said, he basically believes the opposite of Cal Perry. You can't win with freshmen in college basketball and you don't bring them in if they're not going to play because if they're not going to play, they're not going to help you win and they're going to transfer. And so he goes old, he stays old. Now, the one thing I will say, I believe he has a very good NIL set up there. Now, listen, if, if Kentucky came after him, I don't think you can say no. But I give him credit. I was actually very impressed by him. I was a little critical of that hire, but I was very impressed by him uh, over the course of this season. Tell you what. Maybe it's time to get out of here. It's about 9.30 Eastern time. We did an hour and a half, man. Did an hour and a half. All right. I think it's time to go. If you're not subscribed, to the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast, please make sure to do so. First of all, make sure, do me a favor, go ahead, uh, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, whatever. Uh, also, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel right here. Click that little subscribe button bottom of the screen. Uh, what, what are we at in terms of total subscribers right now? I believe we are at close to, we're closing in on 36K, which is just mind-boggling to me. But as I said, I think we can get to 40 by the end of college, by the end of the, the portal cycle here, 35, six, I can give you an exact number. As a matter of fact, we are at 35, six, two, seven. Can we get to 36 before Kentucky has a next head coach? Not if you don't subscribe, if you're not subscribed, please make sure to do so. Apple, Spotify, Amazon music, Google music as well. Uh, make sure by the way, you're following our Torres on accounts. Torres on the hogs. If you're an Arkansas fan, we're going to have wall to wall coverage. You think recruiting has you listen. I don't want to Eric Musselman is as good of a recruiter as anybody in college basketball, but I'm here to tell you Calipari full speed ahead. I think starting tonight, I'm here to tell you, I think we're going to get our first piece of recruiting news by the end of this week, in which case we will have some reaction as well. If you're not subscribed, make sure to do so. Follow Torres on the hogs Torres on UK uh, Hunter does it by the way, Grayson does a great job with Arkansas. Hunter does a great job with UK. He was harassing me all day that Dan Hurley's coming and that I'm going to have to, you know, go into hiding for a couple days. So we'll see if that plays itself out. 
Uh, but make sure you're following those accounts. I think that's really it. Appreciate everybody's support. Uh, again, we're over 3,000 viewers right now live as we get out of here. But I do think it is time to go. Shout out to Torrent Craig. Shout out to Rachel, who hates my voice. Shout out to JJ Reddick, you F head. Unblock me, JJ. You're missing a lot of good content, my guy. We'll be back. Listen, I don't know if we will do a Thursday night live stream. I don't know if we will have a Friday night show. My, my guess is we will probably do something tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back. Appreciate everybody's support.